Rev it up and welcome to Cars Yeah, show number 1558. This is Cars Yeah, where you'll enjoy interviews with inspiring automotive enthusiasts. Mark Green is here to provide you with a fuel injection of automotive inspiration. So get in, sit down, buckle up, and get ready for a wild ride here on Cars Yeah. Hello, inspiring automotive enthusiasts, and welcome to Cars Yeah. I'm revved up and very excited to share with you today a very special guest by the name of Seneca Aguizzi. Seneca Aguizzi is co-founder of Current Automotive, the nation's first online pre-owned electric vehicle retailer. Seneca spent nearly nine years at Tesla and was one of the first 200 employees to join the company back in 2009. He was the top sales representative in North America for 2010 in 2011, and went on to lead a team responsible for the first deliveries of the Model S sedan across 37 states. Seneca established Tesla's certified pre-owned and trading program back in 2014 and led that program until his departure, where he launched Current Automotive in June of 2018. Current Automotive educates consumers on electric vehicle ownerships and sells low-mileage, late-model pre-owned electric vehicles with a focus on Tesla. I'll be back in just a minute to share more about Seneca's story, but first a word from our valued sponsors that make Cars Yeah! possible. We'll be right back. Do you know the best way to protect your special vehicle, both the inside and the outside, is with a car cover? I've been using Covercraft car covers since 1975. That's right, back when I was in high school. I've been around a long time. It's a fast, easy, and inexpensive way to keep your vehicle looking brand new. And they have manufactured premium quality exterior and interior covers here in the United States with a reputation for durability and design for a very long time. They're the world's largest manufacturer of custom pattern vehicle covers, and they're crafted to fit tens of thousands of patterns, and that's growing. You can choose from a dozen fabric options and accessories all designed and carefully sewn for your special vehicle. I protected my rides with their covers for over 40 years, and you know what? you should too. And I've got a deal for you. Right now, you can get 10% off your order using a special Cars Yeah code. The code is YEAH120. Use that code when you check out and you get 10% off your order. What a deal. That's at Covercraft.com. Be sure to use the code YEAH120 at checkout for your 10% off. That's Covercraft.com. What do you do after running a race team for 27 years with over 100 professional wins? multiple wins at the 24 hour of daytona and a win at le mans well if you're kevin buckler racer and the racers group team owner you create adobe road winery located in petaluma california he and his team have created a winning combination with the racing series four ultra premium red wine blends that are in a class of their own like racing these wines comprise of art precision engineering science and a whole lot of fun you can choose from four blends titled redline Apex, Shift, and the 24. Today, I'm going to tell you about Apex. It's a rich and complex blend of Cabernet Sauvignon, Syrah, and Cabernet Franc. This blend is the showcase of perfection and hits the Apex with its full-bodied smooth finish. An added very cool option is a label with a multi-dimensional rumble strip, Apex reminiscent of Turn 4 at Laguna Seca. The Racing Series is a killer gift for the automotive enthusiast in your life, and I've got a deal for you. If you use the code CARSYEAH at checkout, you get a flat shipping rate of $10 on your wine order. Your wine ships promptly and arrives quickly. Use the code CARSYEAH at checkout to get this deal. There's always a seat at the table for excellence with the Racing Series. Go to adoberoadwines.com and use the code CARSYEAH, all one word, today. Cheers. Hello, Seneca. Welcome to Cars. Yeah, are you buckled up and ready for a fun ride? I'm strapped in. You're strapped in and ready to go. All right. Uh, We've unplugged the car, uh, so the landline is discontinued, so we can continue on this electrified journey of yours. Before I jump into my questions, though, I want you to share something with my listeners that most people don't know about you. I'm a former DJ and record label owner. I had a long career in music, spinning records in nightclubs and parties in Chicago and across the country. Yeah, I've got a little bit of a 
uh, creative and musical background. Wow, how interesting. I love that question to start with, and I've had people that would that know my guests that will write in and say, I never knew that about him or about her. So that is very cool. Multi-talented gentleman. I love that. I love it. Well, let's start with a success quote or a mantra, some kind of saying that has been instrumental in forming your life and your success. It's a nice way to get the inspirational tires turning here on Cars. Yeah, so Seneca, take the wheel. Yeah, sure thing. I think the one that I've sort of lived by is the best way to predict the future is to create it. It's sort of been a blueprint for my life, if you will. No doubt, especially working at a company like Tesla. Boy, that sure fits fits there. And it's fascinating that you were one of the first couple hundred employees. What a ride that must have been. How have you incorporated this concept that you live by into what you're doing with your business today? You know, the biggest thing for me is just always looking ahead and finding concepts or things that are going to make people think differently at the way they live their life. And Tesla was one of those things for sure in changing the way you think about a car, but also getting around, uh, especially with regard to eliminating fossil fuels from your life by using electricity instead for mobility. And I've also done other things in my career, such as, you know, the record label and making music in relation to that quote, if you will. But, Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think my passion has always been cars. We'll talk a little bit about that here in the future. Um, But yeah, that's that's the gist of it. The premise of the whole concept. Well, let's talk more about current automotive, because when I learned about you, I went, ah, brilliant. Why didn't I think of that? This seems like one of those things where you kind of hit your head and go, well, of course, there's a whole market coming here specializing in electric cars and the resale of electric cars is brilliant because you would probably know these numbers, but the number of new cars sold versus used cars sold are probably very different, I'm assuming. So let's dive into current automotive, where the idea came from, why you think it's important, and all the benefits of somebody who wants to buy an electric car, but maybe doesn't want to spend as much money or can't afford to spend it on a new car, but there's plenty of the used ones out there that need to be bought and used. So take it away. Yeah, you've you've encapsulated the main points. In a sense, Tesla hit the market with the Roadster in 2008, and you know, that was the high end of the market, also not the most practical vehicle. But as Tesla began to come down market and all the other OEMs created what's considered compliance cars for the uh, CARB standards uh, so that they can offset their fleet-wide fuel economy standards across the cars they sell, those cars left a lot to be desired. And Tesla really, I think, was the pace setter in terms of designing a car that could go the distance, was fun to drive, but also looked normal, but uh, also at the same time aspirational. You wanted to own a Tesla. So that was incredible to be a part of that. During uh, my tenure there and building the use program, started to see used electric cars being sold, and they were sort of just mixed in with regular inventory at a dealership. Uh, and then you would read these studies that the Sierra Club would do about poor consumer experiences when somebody wanted to shop for an electric car, but wasn't really getting the information they wanted or were being deterred to go a different direction Mm. and and say the dealer was trying to convince them to stay with an internal combustion car because that's what they had. That's what they knew. And that's what they wanted to sell. Mm -hmm. Uh, So for us, current automotive really became a, first of all, it's a passion, but it also became a mission to continue educating consumers on what it's like to own an electric car, how to use it, but also the benefits of owning it, too. Absolutely. I've never owned an electric car, but I'm I'm coming around more and more to the whole concept. I was never really opposed to it. In fact, when Chevrolet launched their Volt, where I was working at the time, we were the very first place business they came to to do a special arrive and drive program where we invited all of our customers. We had a retail outlet brought them in. They brought, they did a nine city or nine state tour and they did this and we were the first ones. And I really enjoyed driving the car. I didn't really care much for the design, but then I like European sports cars. So that's just the way my head swings as far as the kind of cars I like. But it was a very enjoyable experience. I've driven Teslas and I'll tell you, my nephew works for Tesla after 11 years at Volkswagen. And he said, I have never worked at a company where owners are more enthusiastic, rabid. He said when there's something wrong with their vehicles, they actually apologize 
for it versus where I used to work where they would scream at me and blame me because something was wrong with their car, even if they didn't put enough oil into it. So that Tesla enthusiasm that you've carried forward into this, what would you tell someone like me who's never had an electric car that might want to try a used one first to see if I like it because we all know new cars depreciate? How would you convince me to get me into an electric car? It really depends on what you want to get out of the experience. A lot of people from our experience at Current selling the broad range of used electric vehicles that are available, we see them choose it as a a primary vehicle that they're going to use every day for driving wherever they need to go, including far distances, or B, it's a second or third vehicle that they're using for just around town. And depending on your use case is where I'm going to suggest one car or the other. Personally, I drive a Model 3, and it fits my needs perfectly. Me and my wife live in an urban environment in in the city. It's easy to maneuver. It's light on its feet. You can whip it around. It's fun to drive, easy to park. My son loves the games that are on board the car. You know, otherwise, I I would say a second car for us would probably be something like a Volkswagen Mm E-Golf if we needed a second car. I'm a former GTI owner, and I love Volkswagen's build quality and uh, German engineering. And the e-golf is as fun as, say, a slightly underpowered GTI. Sure. And I see uh, Mini Cooper has electric, all electric vehicle they're coming out with. Of course, Porsche, the Taycan, who's just launched that. I've been able to ride in one of those. Oh my gosh. Now there's a there's an electric car that I would enjoy as a sports car that's, that's all electric. Now, with your business model, your business platform, are you strictly online? Are you planning on brick-and-mortar type operations to expand across the country so people everywhere could go somewhere close by? Or is it all online where people can just go online, order a car, and you ship it to them? Yeah, so when we first started, uh, we have to have a brick-and-mortar location to be licensed in Illinois. So we, we do have that location in the uh, suburbs of Chicago. Mm -hmm. When we first started, most of our customers were online and we transacted with customers in 32 states in our first 12 months. It was pretty eye-opening for me to see that untapped potential just open up in front of us. Oh yeah. And as word spread, more and more local people started coming to our location because we had multiple vehicles of electric vehicles that people could drive back to back versus going from one dealer to another to another to try three different cars. They can come to one location, try them all, and make a decision at the one spot. So I'd like to think aspirationally our model is CarMax meets Carvana. Mm -hmm. We want to have large locations with multiple vehicles that people can come in, take a look at, kick the tires. But if somebody just wants quick, convenient ability to purchase a car online and get it shipped to them, we offer that as well. Yeah. Well, I think it's fascinating and more and more people are getting more and more comfortable with this idea of shopping online and having cars sent to them. Of course, used cars might be a little different than a new car because a new car, you have expectations. My neighbor last year bought two brand new cars from uh, out of the country and they shipped them to him and they arrived and everything was fine. And, you know, he knew exactly what he wanted. When it comes to shopping for used electric cars, because I would assume here there's a lot less moving parts less things to perhaps go wrong. What are some of the things that a consumer might want to ask someone like Current Automotive about buying a used electric car? I mean, again, you nailed it on the head. The powertrain is simplified. You have either one or two electric motors and a high-voltage battery. There's generally no maintenance required for the electric components on the car, and it's the simple things like tires, alignments, windshield wipers, fluid. When I say fluid, I mean wiper fluid. (laughs) Yeah, that's about it, right? (laughs) Maybe what's in the cup holders, that's about it. (laughs) Sure. And and so, you know, just the history of the car, has it ever been in an accident, any damage? Uh, How is it treated? You know, we have, we have people that ask us for service records all the time on a Tesla, but even Tesla states that the car doesn't require regular maintenance, just Mm -hmm. drive it. And if something goes wrong, the car will tell you to get it done. Get in service. <laughs> yeah. And in the case of my nephew, he does a lot of his servicing online. He doesn't even go and see the vehicle. So they just connect and fixes something or reboots or reprograms and boom, they're on the road again. So it's pretty fascinating. And that's one of the things I think for people when they get an electric car, they realize, oh my gosh, there's not as many 
moving parts here. It, it's pretty simplified. So that's one of the, the joys in this whole thing. How about taking a look at some of the roads you've been down and talk about a big challenge or a big failure that you faced along the way? I ask this not to drum up something really negative, but it's more about sharing an experience with our listeners who might be going through something similar and learning that you came out okay, you learned a great lesson, and things were fine after that experience pushed you forward. So take us on a journey. Yeah, sure. I um, was lucky to, I guess, graduate early or young. I graduated high school at 17. Entered college uh, at 17 in Northern Illinois University, but didn't really take it too seriously. I was partying a lot and and, uh, meeting new people. Came home from the first semester. My father opens up the report card and he goes, wow, uh, three Fs and a D. Uh Why don't you start working? We'll We'll revisit school. And I started at Discount Tire uh, after that and never looked back uh, to, to where I am today. It was just through sheer hustle and grit and cutting my teeth in sales at Discount Tire and then moving into the automotive world and automotive sales to get to where I am today. And um, you know, I think part of it has just been uh, my desire to learn after that and learn from my mistakes mm-hmm. and the, the advent of the internet really uh, f- from that point has really opened up uh, so many resources to people to uh, succeed, even though they don't have uh, a formal college education. Right. You know, it's really interesting to me because you've obviously had great success. You went to work at a incredible company, Tesla, and what's going on there. Um, and to be driven by a guy like Elon, who is just, I think he's an alien, honestly. Um, he's not from this world. Uh, I really admire what he's done. He's very interesting. But the fact that college is not for everybody. And so many people go off to college, they spend all this money, either their parents or they borrow, heaven forbid, and they have all this debt. And then they come out and they still have no idea what they want to do. Their degree is worthless, basically. I think your father did you a huge service there. I mean, he could have said, okay, you got to buckle up, kid, stop partying and get better grades and send you back. But perhaps he saw something that that wasn't the right environment for you to excel in. Do you think that's what it was? Partly. I... um yeah, I I just uh, like to learn how things work, uh, and so uh, I guess this probably uh, goes into the automotive journey too. My first car was a 1995 Honda Civic, and instead of just taking it to get service, I said, "Let me figure out how to service my car." And I ended up taking almost the entire car apart and putting it back together, oh save the internals of the engine, <laughs> uh, and and customizing it and putting wheels on and suspension. And it was almost like fast and furious before the movie came out Right. and the advent of the import scene. And uh, I think that was just sort of where my mind was at. I want to know how things work and become a master at whatever it is that I'm doing. Cool. Was that the experience that you had at Tesla as a company being such a young company where you thrust into a lot of different categories? They just said, Hey, figure this out, make this work. Definitely. They were, uh, hiring folks that were entrepreneurial minded and self starters. You had to be. It was sink or swim. And there were a lot of folks that joined Tesla from the traditional automotive industry at the same time that I did, and they didn't make it. Mm-hmm. They didn't keep an open mind for the new way that Tesla was approaching things. Uh, and it was super important to have that open mind to be successful with the company. Absolutely. My son works for Google and he says it's a lot like that there is they want people that have very open minds and are always thinking beyond the scope of what they're told to do. And that's one of the things he loves about working there. He said, I'm surrounded by some very, very smart people that encourage me and inspire me every single day. And they're always moving people around and finding different avenues for them to grow in. So that's very, very cool. Well, let's take a short break. Let's thank our sponsors. And we'll be right back to talk a little bit more about your personal car journey. You gave us a nice little segue in there with the Honda. So we'll be right back. Sit tight. My favorite collector car magazine is Keith Martin's Sports Car Market. I've been a subscriber for decades. Sports Car Market is the Wall Street Journal for enthusiasts and collectors. It's your monthly must-read, whether you dream of owning a collector car, maybe you have two, or maybe you've got 200. Sports Car Market has been around for 31 years, and it's filled with valuable articles, intelligent write-ups, and the latest auction sales. Go to sportscarmarket.com and subscribe today. And don't miss my weekly podcast with Keith Martin titled Buy, Sell, Hold. It's the essence of collecting. 
we talk to the movers and shakers in the collector car world. Here's a couple deals I have for you just for listening here on Cars Yeah. If you use the checkout code Cars Yeah, you'll receive a 50% discount on your digital subscription at Sports Car Market. That's an exclusive offer from Cars Yeah. And guess what? Here's another deal. If you'd like to get the actual magazine, use the code BSH for buy, sell, hold. That's code BSH. And you'll get $10 off your annual print subscription. That's right. $10 off. Both of these are exclusive offers here at Cars Yeah for Sports Car Market Magazine. Just go to sportscarmarket.com and get your deals today. If you're listening to Cars Yeah, you've probably spent some time working on your favorite ride. But how confident are you working on your finances? You may be able to rebuild a fuel injection system, but can you decipher the details of a mutual fund? If you're like me, investments, insurance, annuities, budgeting, and other financial concepts may seem a bit daunting. But what if I told you there's a book that describes these subjects and more in an easy to read and a very humorous way? My friend Chris Kimball, CFP, a longtime sponsor and past guest here on Cars yeah, has written that book and it's titled The Saga of Ike and Penny, a couple's humorous journey through the confusing world of finance. It's a fun look at things you need to know. Everything from investing to effective ways to get rid of credit card debt and it's probably the only book on finance with a VMAX on the front cover and a classic Mini Cooper on the back. The book's available at Amazon for just $10 and this book will dramatically improve the direction of your financial future. I gave copies to each of my children. All securities are through Money Concepts Capital Corp. Christopher Kimball Financial Services is not affiliated with Money Concepts Capital Corp. Get your copy, The Saga of Ike and Penny, today. All right, we are back, and I'd love for you to share a story that instigated this passion for learning and cars that you have. Is there a pivotal moment in your life when you knew that you were indeed a car guy? There's a few. Uh, one of the first ones is the 1986 Indy 500. Oh, my father was a regular attendee because of his father. Uh, and this has somewhat become a family tradition. And so my first Indy 500 was in 1986. Bobby Ray Hall was the winner. I know he was a guest on your show. Yes. And, um, I have gone to 30 Indy 500 since then. I've only missed a handful ever since. And uh, I'm really bummed about this year because this is going to be my son's first year oh, attending yeah. the race yeah. and four generations of uh, our family attending the race. So he's slowly turning into a car guy as well. Mm-hmm. So Indy 500 has definitely been uh, instrumental on my love for cars and racing. And then, of course, my getting my first car, my 95 Honda Civic, and uh, essentially becoming obsessed with it. And what can I change or what can I modify on the car to really truly make it my own and I ended up creating a car club in my high school days uh, as a senior in recruiting people off the street anybody that had an import car I would pull up next to them honk the horn wave them down say pull over let's talk and uh, you know Somebody doing that today would be looked at as being crazy. Like, get away from but, me, uh, you creepy guy. <laughs> <laughs> but I ended up creating a car club, about 40 people wow. from uh, the Chicago suburbs. And we were featured in the local newspaper because we started taking over the uh, local drive-in that was mostly classic muscle cars. And all of a sudden, all these import cars were popping up. All <laughs> oh, you young guys started, started showing up in your... Yeah, you're, you're, well, it, it's a great story. You know, another, you probably know this, uh, having attended that great race in 86 with Bobby Ray Hall, he was the first driver that year in the history of the race to finish the race in less than three hours, which was a pretty cool deal. I mean, just because the speeds had increased so much. So yeah, if any of you listeners uh, missed my talk with Bobby, you can go back to the Cars yeah website and just type his name in. And his show will pop right up. Uh, really fun having him on the show. Well, let's segue into that next question about first really special car. Uh, if you want to talk more about the Honda, that's fine. 95 Honda Civic. Or was there another car that you'd really lusted after that you always wanted that you finally got? Well, before we do that, I should say this. I did meet my wife because of that car club. And oh, uh, we yeah. have been together ever since uh, we met that day in uh March of 99. So did you honk at her and uh, wave her off the road and said, hey, I want to talk to you? (laughs) (laughs) There was a large party that the car club held, and uh, my wife was invited through a friend of a friend, and 
met her there and uh wow we've been married for 10 plus years together 20 and have a six-year-old son so congratulations um, very that's, cool that's one of the you know, cars brought us together nice and going to the special car i had an opportunity to buy a pretty special car a few years ago and i convinced my wife this is a once in a lifetime opportunity and we should take advantage of it and uh it was a 2011 911 turbo s Oh my gosh. And it was cream white with terracotta interior. Whoa. And um, it's incredible. I owned it for a summer. And um, the fact that I owned one of the world's fastest production cars ever made is just uh, so cool to me. And uh, I just, it, the color combination was so unique as well. I wasn't the biggest fan of sort of an eggshell off white color, but the mm -hmm. combination of that with the terracotta interior really made it one of a kind. And yeah. it was something that, I jumped, uh, I jumped at, and the best memory I have with that car is driving up to Road America for Brian Redmond's Vintage Weekend and displaying it in the streetcar concours on Saturday night, and it was just an uh, incredible <laughs> gathering of people and great conversations uh, about cars. Yeah, absolutely. Well, that car, yeah, pretty spectacular. 530 horsepower, I believe those things have. I'm a Porsche guy, so Love it. And the Turbo S is like the pinnacle of the pr the production line for Porsches. I've always said if I wanted to just go spend a lot of money, uh, that would be the one I would get because everyone I know that has had a GT3, GT3 RS, or any of those cars that they drive every day migrated into the Turbo S saying it's just a better all-around car, a lot more comfortable, does everything you could ever want on a street. Eh, maybe the RS uh, might beat it on the track, but how often are you on the track? But the Turbo S just ticks every single box. So, And that's a really interesting color combination. Uh, very elegant for that car, but kind of fun uh, with the interior color. So very cool. Now, you kept, it, of a kind. you kept it for a short time, it sounds like. I did. And uh, this is just, again, my car fanaticism in me. <laughs> um, I traded it in for a 9972 Carrera GTS. Okay. Uh, and I missed the manual transmission and I really got to see sort of both sides of mm -hmm. Porsche in that generation, yeah. you know, super fast and comfortable GT cruiser. And then sort of, a not quite the GT three line, but the best between a career S and a GT three combined. Yeah. It was black on black with the center lock, uh, wheels. Oh, even better. Kind of cool. All right. Well, you're a Porsche guy, too. That's kind of nice. Have you driven the new all-electric Porsche? I have not. I've sat in it at the Porsche headquarters in North America and eagerly awaiting my first drive in that car. Yeah, I think you'll be very impressed. Yes, it's killer. It's absolutely killer. I can see that in the future there. And, you know, won't be very long before there'll be used ones around uh, that you can pick up in your business as well. So there you go. That'll be kind of fun. Here's a very introspective question for you, Seneca. If you woke up tomorrow and you were a vehicle, what would you be and why? 9972 911 GT3, uh, six speed manual transmission. And I think it's just my personality. Uh, it's the German engineering, the precision, it's fun, and I have an affinity for the analog still, mm. even though I'm pushing the future with electric. Nice. Very cool. I like it. All right, we're entering what I call the last lap. I'm going to fire off some questions, ask you for some very quick blips of that Porsche throttle. So here we go. What's one of your personal habits you believe has helped you be successful? Operate with a beginner's mindset avoid falling into the expertise trap by always learning something new or learning a different way of doing something that you think you're an expert at. And yeah, that's, that's been my core. I love it. How about if I could arrange for you to have a drink or a meal with anyone in the automotive industry, living or deceased, who would it be? Ayrton Senna. Yeah. Nice. Uh, just an incredible, inc incredible legend uh, in the formula one world. And, uh, yeah, uh, the guy was just a beast on track. Yeah, absolutely. My regular listeners know this, but I'll share it with you. I have one of his quotes on the back of my business card. I have for six years now. 
Uh, really admire who he was, what he did, the way he drove, of course, was spectacular, and his whole philosophy on life and so forth. Uh, that quote is, the past is just data. I only see the future. Love it. So I always love that idea of not dwelling on the past, but taking the lesson learned, but always looking down the track. Great metaphor, obviously, for racing, head up, looking way down the track. Not where you are, but where you want to go. It works in life as well. How about the best automotive advice someone else has ever given you? Would you share that? Check your tire pressure. Yeah, and people don't do that very often. I, you know, I I have a joke with the people that service my cars because I'm always every month I have a compressor in my garage, so it's easy to do. I'm always checking the tire pressures every month, and when I come in, they always say, "You know what? You're like the only person whose tire pressures are set accurately. Everybody's down five to fifteen pounds when they bring their car in for service." I have a small fun tangent about tire pressure because I learned that when I was working at Discount Tire. And the Ford Firestone recall happened while I was working at Discount Tire. Oh, that and whole debacle. Yeah. The recommended tire pressure for Ford Explorers was 29 PSI. And what people didn't realize is when you loaded up your SUV with cargo and passengers were going on a road trip, you had to inflate the tires to compensate for the extra weight. Mm. And the tires started to overheat. And that's why they were blowing out. Yep. That's where I had this epiphany moment about tire pressure. Yeah, absolutely. I I watched a, one of those Fords uh, roll go off the road and roll right in front of me with a tire blowing out one late one night, bringing my daughter back from a concert. Scary, scary evening. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I mean, you know that, you know, I raced for years, so you know the importance of tire pressures and the different settings and so forth. But people just don't, it's like oil in the car. I mean, it's why so many people don't check their oil either. It's just uh, amazing. So very important. Yeah, everybody out there, Check your tire pressure every month. It's really, really important for a variety of reasons. Obviously, safety, the most important. How about a resource out there that's a go-to for you that you'd like to share? What would that be? A little bias here, but our Charging Post blog at currentautomotive.com, where we write a variety of uh, articles and topics on electrification and automotive, but also fully charged. Uh, it's a fantastic uh, online program about uh clean energy, electric vehicles, and they had an awesome event in February at Circuit of the Americas that I participated in. Oh, cool. Very, very cool. I'll make sure I put links to that on uh, Seneca's show notes page. Just go to carsyeah.com. He's the only Seneca who's been on the show, so that should be easy to find. Gizi, G-I-E-S-E is his last name, and you'll find uh, links to that. I will check that out as well. Now, how about a book? Is there a book you've read that you would like to share with our listeners? Yeah, I have several, but this one sort of stands out for me. It's Start With Why by Simon Sinek. <laughs> yeah, and wow. um, it's uh, it's just, again, one of those things to live by. You know, why you do what you do is important. Absolutely. I love that book, and I love his TED Talk about Start With Why. In fact, even uh, if you go to my website at the bottom footer, I even have a page dedicated to my why, why I started cars yeah the reason for that but it's such a a simple concept but it's oh so important and it's something actually before he even appeared on the scene that i learned from a, a consultant i hired years and years ago that uh, was pushing me on trying to figure out why i was doing something in the business i was involved in and he really pushed me into an uncomfortable place but then we broke through that and i figured out okay now i see what you're trying to trying to get me to think about. So yeah, uh, listeners, make sure uh, you get your hands on this book and read it, or at the very least, just Google Simon Sinek Why, and you'll see his talk there both on TED Talks, and he's also done some some great uh, video talks on why as well. Great book. If you go to the Cars yeah website, there's a place there called Guest Recommended Books, where this book and over 1,600 books are listed for quick, easy links to buy from my inspiring automotive enthusiast. It will make quite a library for you for sure. All right, we're up to the checkered flag here, Seneca, and this last question can be a bit of a doozy. I'm going to buy you a cool car today, something fun, something collectible, perhaps something that you enjoy in the weekends, not a daily driver, but something to have some fun with. But there are a couple rules to this game. You can't sell it to fund your business. You have to keep it and drive it. No garage queens. And here's the kicker. It's the only one cool, fun car that you can have in your garage. So what's it going to be? Hmm. Well, if you haven't figured it out by now, I'm a Porsche guy. <laughs> I think so. And yeah. I'm also a huge Formula One fan. Okay. And 
I love the story of how Porsche was going to develop a V10 engine for Formula One and had to put it on the shelf because yeah. of financial reasons. And in the end, they resurrected the project and created the Porsche Career GT. And that would be the car for me. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It, it, what a special car that is for sure. You know, I just ran into a guy that lives in my neighborhood. I live in a, a planned community. There's about 780 houses in here. So it's pretty big. And I had not met this guy before. I was doing a little photo shoot with my old Porsche and he was going for a walk with his son and they came over and introduced themselves. He invited me to his house and he has six Porsches, including a Carrera GT. Uh, it has some insane cars, a 4.0, a GT3 RS, uh, also has a Ford GT. I mean, he's got just <laughs> candy land in his garage. But the Carrera GT is such a special vehicle. Um, aside from what you just shared with us, what it is about that car that attracts you so much? Probably the technology side, I'm guessing. Again, kind of going back, analog, uh, it's manual transmission, the V10 shriek in sound, the lack of traction control, stability control. You you have to be on your toes when you're driving that car. No kidding. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's one to really sort of make the person while they're driving it. Now, so that I get you the right one, what color would you like yours to be? Because I've seen them in standard silver, which, you know, black, uh, but I've also seen them in some pretty crazy colors too. I would do signal yellow. <laughs> okay, nice color. Yeah, for those of you non-Porsche files, that's a great color from the 70s when they had all those exciting colors. Tangerine, Signal Yellow, Signal Orange, Viper Green. I mean, they just had all these really killer colors. And uh, I have seen one in that color for a Career GT. I think I saw it at Bruce Canapa's place, if I'm correct, but uh, he's had so much IQ. You are correct. Am I correct? Okay. That was on his Instagram feed. Okay. At some point. Okay. There you go. Yeah. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. And Bruce, of course, always has the best of the best. So uh, I'm going to need a big checkbook, though, if I buy a car from him. <laughs> he, he is the best of the best, but the <laughs> highest of the highest price points, too. So, but it's always worth it. All right. Very nice choice, my friend. You've taken us on a cool, quiet ride today, being electric cars. I've enjoyed your <laughs> stories. I want to thank you for sharing your journey. Could you offer us maybe a little parting piece of wisdom or guidance before you make some noise and rip off into the sunset in that signal yellow Carrera GT. Nice thought, huh? Uh, stay hungry, stay humble, and just, again, beginner's mindset, never stop learning, always find ways to do new things. And um, yeah, you can check out currentautomotive.com. I'm on Instagram at Seneca035, and uh, Current Automotive is at Current Auto on Instagram. Awesome. Great. I'll make sure I put links to all of those on Seneca's show notes page on the Cars yeah website. So if you're driving right now, you get home, you can look that up and follow him on all that social media and check out the website. Check out what he's doing at Cutting Edge. He's taking some of that cutting edge uh, knowledge and marketing prowess that he learned at Tesla and bringing it into his own business. Brilliant idea you've got here, Seneca. Thanks for being so generous today with your time and expertise. And thanks for sharing your story with Cars Yeah. Until you and I talk again, I'll see you down the road. Thanks, Mark. You're welcome. Thank you so much for joining us on today's ride here at Cars Yeah. Drive on over to CarsYeah.com to find show notes and inspiring automotive fun. Download your free copy of Filler Up, a fun book filled with gorgeous photographs of fuel filler fun, including quotes from more inspiring automotive enthusiasts. Download your copy today, and we'll see you next time on Cars Yeah!